Ed Sable always used to say, a football field is shaped like a movie screen. I agree with you, Ed. Welcome, episode eight of In the Garage. I'm Dom, this is my garage. Welcome back, 174 subscribers as it sits today. Thank you very much for subscribing. It's always nice to log on to YouTube and see a couple more subscribers every single day. I truly appreciate it. So I've gotten a couple of questions uh, about positioning on a football field. Like where do I like to be in certain situations? I don't have a football field in my backyard, nor are any football fields open around me where I could physically show you. So I brought out the C-stand and this overhead camera, and I'm gonna play arts and crafts time, and I'm gonna draw out a football field on this beautiful table, and hopefully I can make sense of my philosophy on how I shoot a football game. Here's Dom's camera. If this was an outdoor stadium, the spot where I wanna be is actually wherever the sun is backlighting the players. And most stadiums in the NFL are set up north to south. This would be north, this would be south, this would be west, and this would be east. So in this instance, if I'm over here, that means the sun is somewhere over here shining down, and probably, because usually most games start at one o'clock, the sun will go boop, and it's all gonna be backlit, and I'm gonna stay on this side of the field, primarily because it looks the best. Now when you're in a dome, you could be wherever you wanna be. I'm gonna be over here, here comes the kickoff, boom, touchback. Offense hits the field, they're traveling that way. I'm gonna stay in a, a pretty much similar spot, 10 to 15 yards behind the ball. My best shot in this instance is gonna be behind the line of scrimmage. So as this offense travels down the field, I'm gonna try and stay 10 to 15 yards behind the ball. And they're gonna creep. Now they're getting close to the 50 yard line. Once that play happens and they've made a big gain but they're not past the 50 yet, but they're in this like bench zone, everybody and their mother does this. Camera carts, photographers, local news guys, videographers, everybody's moving down this way. And I like to give it a play, a play or two, but I see my opportunity to get into position. And I'm gonna stay 15, 20, 30, 40 yards in front of them sometimes. It's usually when they get into that 40 yard range that I'm gonna go get set up six to eight yards deep into the end zone. I'm gonna be posted up there in hopes for a <whistles> corner of the end zone shot. That's what you hope for every time. As they come closer, I'm still gonna stay in position and I'm not gonna move until they score a touchdown. Let's say the defense stops them on the five yard line. Now it's fourth down. Here comes the field goal unit. Well, then I get up from my position and I'm gonna move somewhere here to get a better angle of the kicker and the holder. Because when you're, you're back here for a field goal, it just doesn't look as good. You wanna move up a little bit and shoot that field goal unit from, from kind of this vantage point. And then everybody goes back to their bench. I stay here because this team that just scored a field goal is gonna kick off going this way. And I'm back to where we started. I'm back in the spot where they're gonna kick off to me, my first gig as an intern, my first game as an intern was September 11th, 2006. I was the runner for K-Line Shouts. So K-Line had a AC, a film loader, and I was the in-between. I was the runner that took the film to K-Line, and then when he was done with the mag, I'd bring it back to the AC, and that's what a runner does. Kaylin gave me a piece of advice that I never forgot. If that quarterback can take the snap, drop back, and open up to you, meaning just like I am right now, so I just took a snap, and now I'm looking, the camera should be here. Like, if you want a really good shot of a quarterback, you should be right here. Same thing, if this is a right-handed quarterback right here, this is a beautiful spot to be in. If you're on this sideline and it's a right-handed quarterback, well, what are you shooting? You're shooting his back. And again, lighting circumstances and time of day play huge factors in this. If I was to switch sides on a bright sunny day in Santa Clara, now these stands are all blown out and the players are potentially playing in shadows, which just doesn't look as good. Anyway, so right-handed quarterback in this situation, I wanna be right here. 
And as they drive, boom, 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 oh, turnover. Now, this is where the hustle comes in. Whoosh, field is flipped. You're still sitting over here. Do you have a TV timeout? Do you have enough time for this right-handed quarterback to reposition yourself to this side of the field? And this is what I saw K-Line do in Washington, D.C., and I'll never forget it. And anytime I can be in that situation and all the stars are aligned, I'm going to try and do what K-Line did. The best is when you have a right-handed quarterback versus a left-handed quarterback because it's all happening Every quarter is happening on the same side of the field. Um, if you've got two right-handed quarterbacks, you could potentially be running a lot. Shooting on the West Coast, primarily one o'clock games, it's just not an option because I don't want to mess with stark lighting differences. What I just told you about right-handed quarterbacks opening up to you or left-handed quarterbacks opening up to you really helps when you're in a dome or you're shooting Monday night football outside or in a dome because lighting is the same no matter where you are. I just love my X's and O's, it's pretty cool. This team is punting, and let's say it's coffin corner kick, boom. Now the other team is sitting right on their goal line. I'm not gonna sit here, I'm gonna go right here. And I'm gonna go right here because now, with a 23 by or a 22 by lens, I can get some really cool tight shots of the defense looking right at me. And I can float kind of here on this back line, and I might get some ISOs back here of that middle linebacker, of that defensive lineman putting his hand in the dirt. That's where I'm gonna get this. And as they drive, well then I'm gonna run and do my same routine. Wait for the herd to go, and then I'm gonna go, and they're gonna come right at me and hopefully throw a touchdown right in my lens. The other thing that makes this all work is access. Shooting for NFL Films or shooting for the TV broadcast crew, you're gonna have priority. You're gonna have that access to the the lane in front of all the photographers, in front of all, everybody else. So that's why I can pick and choose where I wanna go. Again, this is just how I do it. Other guys have other philosophies. Sometimes you get lucky and sometimes you don't in the position that you're in. Sometimes you're back here and they throw a 75 yard bomb over here. And you're like, well, that sucks. I was behind the line of scrimmage. If you are in that spot, another tip I'm going to give you for free once you see that quarterback dip his shoulder, stay with the quarterback. Let him launch it and you just stay with him. That's gonna be a usable shot as opposed to, oh no, he threw it. Let me try and follow that football going away from you, which is very hard to do. It's just not gonna look good. In my mind, it's a split second when you see him go, stay with it. And sometimes you just wanna go because you're so used to going with it. Well, that's fine. But one thing I've learned is, stay on that quarterback and you'll get a way better shot and they'll actually use it. I hope that made sense. This is, this is my way of showcasing my mindset on where I like to position myself. So if this intrigued you and you have more questions about this setup, comment down below, ask me questions down below because I do enjoy doing this and uh, gives me something to do on the weekends. I'll be back next week for episode nine, hopefully answering some more questions or doing whatever I come up with the day before I shoot these. Maybe it'll involve more clip art, who knows. But again, thanks for tuning in. I'm Dom, this is my garage. I'll see you next week in episode nine. Take care.